Today, we're gonna make a concrete bench that heats up. We are gonna start by making the mold for the concrete. I used my circular saw to break down a full sheet of melamine. I already bought the heating mat, so I'm just cutting the melamine so that I can make a concrete form that's about two to three inches bigger than the heating mat on all sides. I use my table saw to rip some three and a half inch wide strips of melamine. These will be used for the edges of the form. I do quite a bit of concrete work and I find that using a hot glue gun is enough to reinforce the forms, but if you want to play it a little bit safe, you can use screws as well. I use silicon sealant to seal all the edges of the forms. I just laid on a heavy bead and then use my fondant tool to press the sealant into the cracks and to give me a consistent radius. Once the silicone has cured, I can then just peel it away along the lines that were created by the fondant tool. I'm going to cut some plywood that I'm going to use on the underside of the bench. This is going to give me material to attach the heating mat to, and it'll also give me a place to fasten the steel legs to. I cut plywood that was the same width as the heating mat, but a little bit longer. I then cut two additional pieces of plywood that would go on either end. Now, I want the cord to come out the bottom of the plywood, so I just drill the hole and then cut it a little bit bigger with my jigsaw. I use wood glue to glue these end pieces of plywood to the main piece, and this will just give me an inch and a half of material to screw the steel legs into. I drilled one more hole for the cord to go through, and then applied a heavy coat of varathane, water-based polyurethane, in crystal clear mat. This is just to seal the plywood and to keep water from absorbing into it. Now I want to push the heat up towards the concrete and away from the plywood, so I installed this layer of reflective insulation. It's kind of like bubble wrap that I got from Home Depot. And I just used some half inch pan head screws to screw it down. I placed the heating mat that I bought from Amazon, ran the cord through the hole, and then applied some reflective tape around it. Now I don't want the concrete to crack, so I did use a little bit of steel mesh as reinforcement. And this will also serve to help hold the mat in place when it goes upside down into the form. I then sealed the underside of the hole with some silicone. I screwed on some scrap pieces of wood that'll keep this whole contraption from settling too far into the concrete. For concrete, I'm going to use Quickrete Commercial Grade Countertop Mix in white. This is a very fine grain concrete that's super strong. It's about 6,000 PSI. I mixed up about two and a quarter bags in a mixing tray and then poured it into the form. I used the hoe to spread it around evenly and push it down into all the corners before adding the plywood contraption that has the heating mat on it. The plywood weighs less than the concrete, so it'll tend to try to float up on you. So I just used some weights to hold it down. I poured concrete around the edges of the plywood and then shook it a little bit to help get out the bubbles. While the concrete is curing, I painted the steel legs that I got from Semi-Exact. They're super heavy duty, made out of solid flat bar steel, and I just hit them with a coat of Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer before finishing them with some Rust-Oleum 2X. Be sure to check out Semi-Exact. I'll put a link in the description box below. They got a ton of great steel products that make all sorts of DIY projects a whole lot easier. Gary, my pet chipmunk, came by to say hi, but I had to shoo him away since he always leaves his little paw prints in my paint. He has such a knack for showing up only when there's wet paint or plaster. I let the concrete cure for a full 48 hours. I then knocked away the support flaps and pulled off the pieces of melamine. I used one and a half inch long screws with some washers to attach the steel legs. And then had Mike from Modern Builds help me flip the bench over so that I could plug it in and test it out. I plugged in the cord and turned on the heating pad. Now on its own, the heating pad gets to about 120 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. After having it on for about two hours, surface of the concrete bench got up to about 85 to 90 degrees in a room that was set to 70 degrees. Now this was just a cheap heating pad and there's a lot more high end and probably better functioning heating elements out there but I just wanted to quickly test it to see if rapidly heating the concrete would cause cracks. I was very pleased to see that it didn't, and now I'll begin investigating more substantial and energy efficient heating systems 
because I really like this idea. There's been so many times where I've been at outdoor restaurants and seen sort of these giant propane contraptions which are heating a lot of air and not always a lot of people. I would really like to develop some pressure sensitive furniture both through upholstery and through concrete or wood that only applies heat when somebody's sitting on the piece of furniture. But I'd love to hear your guys' takes on this, so feel free to hit me up with your ideas in the comment section below, and also take a stab at making your own heated furniture. Check out some of our other videos, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks everybody, bye. Oh, and if you wanna learn more about the concrete products that I use, go to quickcrete.com.